Today, we're going to take a look at arithmetic and geometric sequences and series. An arithmetic sequence is a list of numbers where the growth, the change, is created by addition. Keep in mind, you could be adding a negative, so it could also decrease. But the key idea here is it's created by addition. An example would be something like this. 5, 9, 13, 17, 21, and on it goes. We identify the terms in this list by the index number. This is a sub 1. This one, a sub 2. That one is a sub 3. Here, that's a sub 4. We wouldn't necessarily have to start at 1. We could start at 0. a sub 0, then the next one would be a sub 1, then a sub 2. You can see this written a variety of ways. We can find a particular number in the list, maybe a sub 23, by just understanding how the sequence grows. This sequence starts at 5. Every time I move forward one number in the sequence, I add 4. Keep in mind, you're starting at the first term. To get to the 23rd term, you only have to move 22 places in this list of numbers. Starting at the first term, you have to add 4 22 times to get to the 23rd term. This would be 88 plus 5, it's 93. You can generalize this for any sequence by the formula below. A sub n, whatever number we're looking for, like the 23rd, is equal to 5, the first term, that's a sub 1, plus, now I have these in a different order, d is the common difference, it's what you're changing by. And I wrote d first, the common difference was 4 because I was increasing by 4. And n minus 1, because you're starting at the first term, you only have to move forward in my example, 22 spots to get to the 23rd term, which is why you see the n minus 1 times d at the end of the formula. An arithmetic series, the key word here being series, is when we take a sequence and we add the individual terms. So the series would be 5 plus 9 plus 13 plus 17 plus 21 plus this series could be infinite or it could be finite, meaning it has a limit. If we add a certain number of terms in the arithmetic series, that is called a partial sum. The way you find a partial sum, let's call it S sub 8, which would be the sum of the first eight terms in this sequence, is you average the first and last number in the sequence, which means I need to continue on here. Plus 25, plus 29, plus 33, and I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That'll be S sub 8. I'm summing the first eight numbers. We'll average the first and the last, 5 plus 33 divided by 2, and then you multiply by the number of terms, and there are 8. 5 plus 33 divided by 2 is 38 divided by 2, that's 19, and 19 times 8 ends up being 152. The partial sum then, S sub 8 of the first eight terms in the sequence is 152. This can be generalized into the formula listed below here. S sub n, this is on the right, equals the number of terms times the average of the first and last term. A geometric sequence is a sequence created by multiplication. An example is 5, 10, 20, 40, 80, 160. 
just like arithmetic, we can describe our terms in the sequence by the index number. A sub 1, 1 is the index number. This is a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4, the fourth number in that sequence. I can find a particular number, like maybe a sub 10, by just observing the pattern. This sequence starts at 5, and every time you go forward, you multiply by 2. That 2 is called the common ratio, and the common ratio can be found by taking the current number in the sequence and dividing by the previous. Common ratio is current divided by previous. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 20 divided by 10 is 2. And multiply by 2 over and over. So my sequence starts at 5. It multiplies by 2. 5 is the first number in that sequence. It's a sub 1. So to get to the 10th number in the list, I only have to move 9 places forward because I'm starting at the first. So this is 5 times 2 to the ninth power. I keep multiplying by 2 over and over until I get to the 10th term, 9 places from the first. This ends up being 2,560. This can be generalized for every geometric sequence into the formula below. a sub n, whatever term you're looking for is n, equals the first term, the first term here was 5, times r, now r is not the rate, it's the common ratio. They used r for the common ratio. That's what we're multiplying by, it's the 2, to the power of n minus 1. Just like in my example, because I was going to the 10th term, and because I started at the first term, I only had to move forward nine places to get to the 10th term. In a geometric sequence, we have the geometric mean. The geometric mean is the square root of the product of two numbers. You multiply them, and you take the square root. It turns out that if I take any number in a geometric sequence, except for the first, say the second, that it ends up being the square root of the product of the two numbers next to it. The square root of 5 times 20 is going to be equal to 10. If I pick 80, the square root of 40 times 160 will end up being 80. This means if I give you a sequence like 4, comma, we don't know, comma, 36, and something, comma, 324, we can find these unknown values because they're the middle number. All we need to do is take the square root of 4 times 36. That will end up being 12. You know this is 12. And the square root of 36 times 324. And that will end up being 108. This one is 108. When we take a geometric sequence and add the terms, we get a geometric series. 5 plus 10 plus 20 plus 80 plus 160. On it goes. If I want to find the partial sums of a geometric series, the first thing I need is the common ratio. Common ratio is the current divided by the previous. Pick any term but the first one, 40, and divide it by the previous value, 20, in the sequence or the series, and I get 2. 
In this sequence, I multiply by 2 repeatedly. In the formula, they call the common ratio R. I want to make it clear that when we did exponential growth, we called R the rate of growth. Here they're calling R the common ratio, current divided by previous. For us, in this example, R is 2. To find the sum, the partial sum, of the first eight terms, we start with 5. We multiply by 1 minus R, the common ratio, 2 to the power of N, the number of terms you're summing. This would be 8 here. And then I divide that by 1 minus R, 1 minus 2. This is the formula for the sum of the first N numbers, in which, in our case, N is 8. This becomes 5 times 1 minus 256 over negative 1. That's 5 times negative 255 over negative 1. And the answer is 1,275. The sum of the first eight terms in this series is 1,275. The formula is then the sum of the first n terms equals the first term times 1 minus the common ratio, they're calling r, to the power of n, the number of terms, all divided by 1 minus r. Note that r can't be 1 because if it was, you'd be dividing by 0. That would be undefined. The rest of this video is questions from your assignment. Question 1. Find the next term in the sequence. Since every term in the sequence is created by subtracting 4 as we move to the next term, this is arithmetic. We're adding the same number every time, negative 4. The next number after negative 6 then would be negative 10. Remember that that negative 4 is called the common difference. Here's another arithmetic sequence. We're going to find the 44th term in the list. A sub 44 can be found by starting at the first term, 12, and we add 2 every time we move. Add 2 is the common difference. We're adding 2 over and over and over. Because we're starting at the first term, to get to the 44th term, we only need to move 43 places in this list of numbers to get to the 44th term. 2 times 43 is 86, plus 12 is 98. 98 would be the 44th term in that list of numbers. Question 5. We're given the 20th term and the 26th term. Keep in mind what's going on here. There are numbers before. When we get to the 20th term, we see that it's 57. And then we keep going and eventually get to the 26th term, and it's 75. Now, how many terms are between these two? That would be 6. What you need to realize is that you need the common difference. That is the key to find the answer here. If we know what we're changing by, we can find any number in the sequence, as long as we have some place to start either and either go forwards or backwards. The common difference here we'll call D. We know that if we start at 57 on that list of numbers and we move forward six spots, so six times we'll add the common difference. The result of adding the common difference six times would give us 75. This is an equation we can solve. We'll subtract 57 from both sides. And we get 6D equals 18. And then we'll divide by 6. And we see that D is 3. The common difference is 3. 
That means if I pick up at a sub 20 and I want to get to a sub 23, if I start at 57, the 20th term, and I add the common difference 3, I only need to move 3 spots to get to the 23rd turn. Add 3 times 3, 9 to 57, and we get 66. The 23rd term would be 66. Just like the previous example, the thing we need to find is the common difference. If we start at the sixth term, negative 55, this is the sixth, and we add the common difference over and over and over. In fact, to get from 6 to 11, we move five places. So I have to add the common difference five times to get to the 11th term. And the result of doing that is negative 100 the 11th term. So let's solve for D. We'll add 55 to both sides. We get 5D equals 45, negative, and divide by 5, and D is negative 9. We're going to find A sub 19. Now we could pick up at either spot. It wouldn't matter. I'm going to start at the 11th term. The 11th term is negative 100. There's the 11th term. And we want to get to the 19th term. To go from 11 to 19, we have to move eight places in the list, meaning I add the common difference, negative 9, eight times to get to the 19th term, from 11 to 19. This is negative 72 plus negative 100 or negative 172. Question 7 is actually a lot like the last two. If I call the common difference D, I'm going to have to add D once to get to the next spot and then add D again to get to the spot after that. And to get to the last spot, I'll have to add D one more time. So if I start at negative 30, I have to add D three times to get to negative 54. We'll add 30 to both sides, and we get 3D equals negative 24. And we'll divide both sides by 3, and D will be negative 8. So from negative 30 to the next spot, I'm going to add negative 8. That's negative 38. And to get to the spot after that, I'll add negative 8, and I get negative 46. And then if I add 8 again, I get negative 54. Question 9 is a lot like the last one. To get from negative 81 to the next spot, we add a common difference once. And we'll add it again to get to the spot after that. And add it again to get to the spot after that. And one more time to get to negative 45. If we start at negative 81, we have to add D four times to get to negative 45. We'll add 81 to both sides. And we get 36. 4D equals 36. Divide by 4, and D will be equal to 9. So to fill out our boxes above, we start at negative 81, and we add 9, and we get negative 72. And we add 9, and we get negative 63. Add 9, we get negative 54. And if we add 9 again, we do get negative 45. And there's our answer. Question 10 is about partial sums. To find S sub 16, we take the first and the last term. Uh-oh, we need the last term. Hmm. A sub 16 would be equal to 7, the first term, 
Notice we're increasing by 7 in this list. Plus 7, plus 7. So the common difference is 7. And to get from the first spot to the 16th spot, we only have to add 7 15 times. 7 times 15 is 105, plus 7 is 112. So back to the partial sum. We average the first term and the last term, 7 plus 112. We average them, we divide by 2, and we multiply by the number of terms. There are 16. This is 59.5 times 16, which is 952. Question 12. We're going to try to figure out what the sum is. What I need is to know what term that is. I can see that we're increasing by 4. That means if I start at 1 and I add 4 a certain number of times, let's call that n, I get 141. We'll take a 1 off each side. 4n equals 140. And divide by 4. And that is 35. Now, the thing to remember is that from the first term, this was the first, we moved 35 places to get to 141, which means this is actually the 36th term in the sequence. Maybe a better way to do that would have been this sequence starts at 1. Every time I move forward, I add 4. Remember, I don't go n places forward to get 141. I go n minus 1 places forward to get to 141. If I solve this, then I would get n equals 36. Let's do that really quick. 1 plus 4n minus 4 equals 141. That's 4n minus 3 equals 141. 4n equals 144, and then n is 36. Now we can apply our formula. The partial sum of the first 36 terms of this sequence, s sub 36, is the average of the first and last term times the number of terms, which is 36. This ends up being 71 times 36, which means S sub 36 would be 2,556. Question 13. We're going to write this arithmetic sequence as a sum using summation. First thing we notice is that the common difference, we're adding 4 each time we move forward. Be nice to know which term this is. This is our first term. I know that if I start at our first term, which is 20, and I add 4 and move not n places forward, the number of places forward, but n minus 1 places forward, because you're starting at the first term, you don't have to move n places forward, but always one less, because you're starting at the first term. The result of this is 60. We get 20 plus 4n minus 4 equals 60. 16 plus 4n equals 60. 4n equals 44. n is 11. I know I'm stopping at the 11th term. There are 11 terms in this series. The series starts at 20, and every time you move forward, it adds 4. Now, when I plug in 1, this needs to be 0. So I'm going to go i minus 1. 
When I plug in 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 times 4 is 0, and my first term will be 20. Then after that, I'll be increasing 4 every time. Notice how that's right here. And we're using i, not n. And notice how I could also simplify this, and this would have worked too. This would simplify to 16 plus 4i, because we're plugging in i, not n. You can see how this would work. If I plug in i as 1, 16 plus 4 times 1 is 20. 16 plus 4 times 2 is 16 plus 8, that's 24. 16 plus 4 times 3 is 16 plus 12, which is 28. Either one of these will work fine in WAMAP. 15 and 16 have to do with geometric sequences. A geometric sequence is created with multiplication. That number is called the common ratio. The common ratio, as a reminder, is the current term divided by the previous term. You can use any term but the first term. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 36 divided by 12 is 3. 108 divided by 36 is 3. In other words, I'm multiplying by 3 to move forward in this sequence over and over. All I need to do then is take 3 times 324 and I get 972. To find the seventh term in a sequence, like number 16, all I need to do is understand we're starting at 9. Every time we move forward, we multiply by the common ratio. Take a current divided by a previous to find it in the sequence. 54 divided by 9 is 6. And to get to the seventh term, because I'm at the first term when I begin, I only have to multiply by 6 six times. I'm moving six places from the first to get to the seventh. Nine times six to the power of six is a large number. 419,904. Let's find the missing terms in this geometric sequence. When I move forward, I multiply by the common ratio. We'll call it R. R is not the rate. Here is the common ratio. Every time I move, I multiply by R. Each time I get to a new place, I multiply by another R. That means 9 times R to the third power is going to be 243. I'll divide each side by 9. 243 divided by 9 is 27. I'll take the cube root of both sides. And the cube root of 27 is 3. Common ratio is 3. I'll take 9 times 3 to get 27. And 27 times 3 to get 81. And 81 times 3 will make that 243. The geometric mean is the square root of the product of two numbers. The square root of the product. Take the square root and multiply them. The result here is 64. That means this is part of a geometric sequence, the first term being 32, the next term being 64, and then 128, and on we go. 64 is the answer. Question 20. There are a couple ways we could do this. If you're paying attention in the teaching part of the video, you might have learned one of them. The first thing we're going to do, though, is what we did in question 18. To get from 20 to the next number, I multiply by the common ratio, r. r is not the rate here, it's the common ratio. Then I multiply by r again to get to 320. And then by r again to get to the next term. And then one more time to get to 5,120. We can make an equation with just part of this. We could say 20 times r times r, that's r squared, equals 320. Divide by 20, and we get r squared equals 16. Take the square root of both sides, and r would be 4. 
4 times 20 is 80. Keep multiplying by 4. 4 times 80 is 320. 320 times 4 is 1,280. And times 4 again, and I get 5,120. The other way we could have done this question is with the geometric mean. It would have been a little bit quicker. The number between any two numbers in a geometric sequence is the geometric mean. This number then, right here, would be the square root of 20 times 320. This results in the same answer we had before of 80. And just like we did with this one, we could have found that one by taking the square root of the product of the two numbers next to it. The square root of 320 times 5,120. And that ends up being 1,280. The answers then were 80 and 1,280. Question 21. We have a geometric sequence, a list of numbers. They've given us the third one and the seventh one. We want to find the ninth one. If we begin with the third one, negative 189, this is the third, we know that we multiply over and over and over to get to the seventh term. From the third term to the seventh term, we multiply by that common ratio r, r, and r, and r four times. 7 minus 3 is 4. We multiply by r four times, and the result of doing that is negative 15,309, the ninth term. To solve this, we'll divide by negative 189. R to the fourth power is 81. To solve for R, we'll take the fourth root of each side, and the fourth root of 81 is 3. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 4 times makes 81. To get from the seventh term to the ninth term, I have to multiply by R twice more. We can find A sub 9 then. By starting at a sub 7, negative 15,309, and multiplying by our common ratio, which is 3, twice. To get from the 7th term to the ninth term, I multiply by the common ratio twice. a sub 9 is negative 137,000. 781. Question 23. We're going to find the partial sum using the formula. S sub n, the sum of the first n terms, is equal to the first term, call it a sub 1, times 1 minus the common ratio to the power of n over 1 minus the common ratio. We need to find that common ratio. In a geometric sequence or series, we take any current value, except for the first one, and we divide by the previous. It would be 32 divided by 8, which is 4. Every time we step forward, we multiply by 4. S sub 9, the sum of the first nine terms, is the first term, 8, times 1 minus the common ratio, that's 4, to the power of n. n is the number of terms you are summing, and there are going to be a 9 of them, all divided by 1 minus 4. This is equal to 8 times 1 minus 4 to the power of 9 is negative 262,143 divided by negative 3, which is 8 times 
87,381, and that becomes 699,048. Question 24, another partial sum. First, let's find the common ratio, the current divided by the previous. That's 63 divided by negative 21, which is negative 3. S sub 8 will be the first term, negative 21, times 1 minus the common ratio. Notice the parentheses, negative 3 to the power of n. And we are adding 8 terms divided by 1 minus negative 3. Careful with your parentheses. You could easily miss this just by typing it in wrong. Negative 21 times negative 65,060 divided by 1 minus negative 3 is 4. So we'll divide that by 4 and we get negative 21 times negative 1,640. We'll multiply those two and we get positive 34,440. Question 26. Here we're going to find the partial sum, S sub 5, for this summation. Notice we're multiplying by one-third. That's actually the common ratio, which we're now calling R. Every time we move forward, we multiply by one-third. And this is a summation. We'll be adding a bunch of numbers together. There will be five of them, in fact. We have the common ratio. All we really need here is the first term. To find the first term, we'll plug in n is 1. This will become 1 minus 1, which is 0. One third to the zeroth power, anything to the zeroth power is one. And 2,187 times one is 2,187. A sub one then is 2,187. We know the common ratio R is one third. We just need to plug these in the formula. The sum of the first five terms, that's the five here, would be the first term, 2,187, times 1 minus the common ratio, 1 third, to the power of 5 over 1 minus 1 third. Let's put this in the calculator. This ended up being a huge decimal. But when I multiplied that by 2,187, I plugged this all in at once, I got a nice answer of 3,267. Question 27. This is a lot like the arithmetic question we had. In order to add these up, we need to know how many terms are there. Let's find what term this is. My sequence starts at negative 3. Every time it moves one spot, it multiplies by 3. That's the common ratio, current divided by previous. There are n terms in this sequence, but this is the first one. And from the first spot to the very last spot, I only have to move n minus 1 places, which means n minus 1 is my power. I have to multiply by 3 n minus 1 times to get this last term. That's negative 6,561. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. This becomes 3 to the n minus 1 equals 2,187. I'm going to take the log of both sides. Log log. When I do that, remember I can move that exponent down. n minus 1 times the log of 3 equals the log of 2,187. I'll divide both sides by the log of 3. 
and that will cancel, and I'll have n minus 1 equals this. And let's plug that in the calculator. This in the calculator ends up being 7. I'll add 1 to both sides, and n equals 8. There are 8 terms in this sequence. Plug this into the formula. S sub 8, the sum of the first eight terms in our geometric series is the first term, negative 3 times 1 minus the common ratio, 3, to the power of n, and there were eight terms, over 1 minus 3. This ends up being negative 3 times 3,280, and I'll multiply that, and we get S sub 8, the sum of the first eight terms, is negative 9,840. Question 28. This is just a series that we're writing in sigma notation. It's a geometric series. You appear to be multiplying by one-third. As you move forward, notice how the bottom keeps multiplying by 3. We could write this different ways, but I notice the top is always the same. The bottom, this is 3 to the first power, and the 9 is 3 to the second, and that's 3 to the third. 5 over 3 to the n, so if n is 1, it's 3 to the first. If n is 2, it's 3 to the second. n is 3, is 3 to the third. That makes that 27. Now the question is, how many places do I move forward to get that number right there? Let's just look at the denominators. I know that if I start at 3, I multiply by 3 to go forward, and I do that n minus 1 times to get to the last denominator, 1, 1, 6, 2, 2, 6, 1, 4, 6, 7. Woo! Let's divide that by 3. We have 3 to the power of n minus 1 equals 3, 8, 7, 4, 2, 0, 4, 8, 9. Let's take the log of both sides. Log, log. And we'll move that n minus 1 down, n minus 1 times the log of 3 equals the log of that large number. Divide both sides by the log of 3. And this now becomes n minus 1 equals 18. So n would be 19. We're going to the 19th position in the series to get that last denominator. Here we have another geometric series. It starts at negative 2. And then it moves forward by multiplying by 3. Remember that there are n terms. Since I'm starting at the first term in that series, to get to the last term, I only have to multiply by 3 n minus 1 times. Because I'm starting at the first, and there are n of them. Um, I only have to move forward or multiply by 3 n minus 1 times. The result of doing that is negative 1,458. Divide both sides by negative 2. 3 to the n minus 1 power is 729. Now let's take the log of both sides. And we'll bring the n minus 1 down. And 
We'll divide by the log of 3. We get n minus 1 equals 6. Add 1 to both sides, and we can see the n would equal 5. So from 1 to 5, there are 5 terms. And we start at negative 2. And then we multiply by 3. And then we go to the power of, now if I go to the power of n, when I plug in 1, it's negative 2 times 3 to the first, which would be negative 6. That's the second term. So I need to go to the power of n minus 1. That way, when I plug in n as 1, it's 3 to the 1 minus 1, or 3 to the 0, which is 1, and 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. That's my first term. This, then, is my answer.